We're here with Sophie Mathieu, KMFA's 2024 Draylon Mason composer in residence. So good to be with you once again. We've spent some time together over the past year-ish. Mm -hmm. About a year ago, uh, we met for lunch we and did. talked about you becoming our Draylon Mason composer in residence for 24. Yeah. And you were excited, and I was excited, and we talked about what this might look like, and you had some ideas already, and mm -hmm. the ensemble that we both kind of talked about right off the bat uh, yeah. to do a premiere would be Austin Unconducted. That is who is going to do the premiere yeah. on the 22nd um, of your new work, Night Poem. Mm -hmm. And I remember we talked briefly about how this would look yeah. when we had that lunch, and it's basically... Very few constraints, mainly yeah. time limit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it can't be crazy long. Yeah. Um, and accessible to a wide audience. Mm -hmm. And you have done it. You've created a fantastic piece of music. I'm lucky because I've heard it. Uh, got to hear it in the workshop setting. Mm -hmm. So tell me, when, when you went to compose this work, how soon did you kind of gel around the idea of, okay, I know what I'm doing and I'm going to do this? Yeah, it was pretty quickly. I usually I have a like big document of like piece ideas that I want to use. Um, normally they're in the form of like a title, um, but they often have like a concept tied to it as well. So I'd been wanting to write this like nighttime nature piece for a long time. And I was just looking for like the right ensemble, the right commission to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought, you know, having a large group of strings would be perfect to sort of yeah. evoke that type of a scene. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. The strings in particular are great for some of those um, some of those nighttime sounds. Absolutely. So, what yeah. kind of nighttime sounds um, come to mind for you when you think back to what you were writing? I think I was really inspired by the sounds we hear here in Central Texas. Um, so a lot of like insects chirping was like kind of the main one, but also it's more of an impressionistic view of like a nighttime landscape. So some of the sounds I chose are more evoking um, the the landscape itself rather yeah. than the animals that live within it. Yeah, almost yeah. atmospheric. Yeah, anyway. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. wonderful. For, for those who are listening to watching this, who aren't familiar with you, give us some of your background. You, you were educated here in Austin. You're an Austin was, native. Yeah. So take us from childhood through now. Yeah. So yeah, as you said, I grew up here in Austin. I went to Westwood High School in Round Rock ISD. Um, started composing when I was in middle school and then uh, jumped into the Austin Symphony's uh, Young Composer program yes. that was around back then. Um, you know, writing for orchestra was like so exciting to me yes. and um you know i was like i'm gonna take a stab at this um and then from there you took several stabs at it i took several stabs at it i did yeah i you applied were, you were successful each time no i was not no? i so i applied five times got in four. Oh, well, that's pretty um, <laughs> that's, that's pretty much the yeah majority. so okay. yeah for some reason the the second time i applied was the time that they did not okay. accept my piece and then i actually ended up revising that same piece sending it in another year, and then I guess it was good enough to get in that okay. year. So yeah, so that was like a really interesting way for me to learn like, oh, this is what rejection feels like <laughs> as a composer. But then yeah, I, I was able to use that same piece. So I was really excited that that eventually was premiered by them. Very nice. And then from there, I ended up taking private lessons with Graham Reynolds, who is now my boss at Golden Hornet. Yes. Graham ended up starting the Golden Hornet Young Composers program which I was in the first year of, I kind of helped him form some ideas for like what that might look like. Mm -hmm. um, and that was my senior year of high school. And then I went to college at USC in California, uh, came back here to UT Austin for my master's. I'm now teaching the same Young Composers program with Golden Hornet that I was in. and Because you're a veteran of it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's really interesting for my students who are in it now to hear yeah. that like, Oh, you know, 10 years ago, <laughs> I was a student in that. I was yeah. like right where they are. And things have so, changed too. 10 absolutely. years ago, the way things worked then, as opposed to now. Yeah. Very different. Technology's really changed a oh, lot. Oh, 100%. And so that, that yeah. comes into play. Absolutely. Yeah. I think the first year that I was in it as a student, I think we had maybe six or seven kids in the program. We got 36 applications. Um, and chose 20 students from that because um, we can't accommodate 36. I wish we could, but yeah, yeah so, so it's really more uh, 
the limit is more on just the number of students. It's not, yeah. not the quality. Absolutely, yeah, because yeah. I mean, the, the main constraint on that is just how long the concert is going to be. Because uh, <laughs> having 36 pieces in one concert, it'd be like four or five hours. Even long. if they were short. Yeah, still absolutely. Be too long. Yeah, no, with, even with 20, we have to limit them to three minutes each. Three minutes, okay. So that makes up, you know, 60 minutes of music plus intermission plus, yeah. you know, starting late plus talking before each piece. Um, and you know, that adds up very quickly. You very quickly got like a two hour sure. show out of that. Yeah. So, and I have to ask you, so yeah. as a composer, you know, th three minutes sa sounds short to most people. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I mean, three minutes is a long time. And yeah. so when you're writing a three minute piece, it's a, there's a lot of writing going on. Oh yeah. And especially for a kid, I would say three minutes is, is a lot of music. A lot of them are doing it for their first time. Right. Um, and yeah, it's really interesting watching them trying to form ideas, trying to figure out how to carry the idea through an entire three minutes, because it is deceptively long oh, when yeah. you think about it. But it's totally invaluable, yeah. Yeah. this whole process, because they're learning to put their thoughts on paper, yeah. but then to actually, they get to hear it performed. Absolutely. And you know, from being a, a young student, hearing your works played by a symphony orchestra, is, that had to be incredible. <laughs> oh yeah, it absolutely I've never was. written anything, but I can imagine yeah. <laughs> Wow, this must oh my feel so incredible. Yeah, the first time um, rehearsing with the ASO, my first piece I wrote for them, yeah. um, they sat me down on stage right next to the conductor. It was uh -huh. a, a guest conductor. It wasn't Peter Bay for that one. Yeah. And just getting to be right there next to the concertmaster, seeing this whole orchestra like move and breathe together, and they're playing my music. You're bringing it to life. Yeah, something yeah. I had like heard in my brain for like months and months. So and then cool. suddenly it's like there in front of me in real wow. life. It was amazing. Well, yeah. you, you have got to hear this work. Yeah. Right? Because we had the work, workshop in the summer. Yeah. But uh, I think it's probably still going to be just as exciting for oh, you absolutely. to hear it played by Austin Unconducted yeah. on the 22nd. Yeah. Uh, performance is at 4 p.m. Mm -hmm. uh, we have people in at 3 o'clock or so. So uh, it's going to be fantastic. We're going to love this. So this work is around 10 minutes in length. Yeah. How much time did it really take you to do that? A lot, To right? compose it? Yeah, yeah. it took, oh, yeah, months. Yeah, yeah I think I, I made, like, the biggest, I spent the biggest chunk of time on it in the month of June. Uh -huh. And I found a week and a half to go up to my parents' house. They live in the Fort Worth area. Okay. And I just kind of, like, you know, went in their, like, guest room, kind of, like, barricaded myself in there yeah. and just, like, worked on it, worked on it. And, yeah. Um, you know, it was really nice. I really enjoy having like a change of scenery when I'm composing. Sure. So being up there was was really nice. And yeah, I think, you know, you can ask my mom. She'll be at the premiere <laughs> that I was like in there just like working on it, working on it for hours each day. And, so yeah. in the workshop process, <laughs> yeah. um, I'm always curious about these things. So in that process, did you, you know how the work is sounding in your head? And mm -hmm. when you hear it played, were there major things that you said, oh, wait a minute. I really want to draw this out a little bit more, or I want to put, pull this back some. Was is it helpful for you to have this kind of workshop? Oh, absolutely! It's yeah. super helpful. I I was very fortunate that there was nothing major that I felt needed yeah. to be edited, but it's really interesting. Um, you know, hearing a work for the first time, especially with sort of the style I'm working in. Mm -hmm. I like to use a lot of um, sort of like textural effects and some extended techniques. Yeah. Um, and you know, the notation software I use has a playback function, but it's not going to be able to play back, yeah. you know, the sounds that I'm envisioning. The more nuanced things. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So just being able to hear them do all those techniques, um, that I hadn't heard before, I just imagined, um, was really valuable. And there are a few small tweaks, but yeah. thankfully I was pretty happy with it and didn't have like too many edits after the workshop. Well, that's wonderful. Well, we are looking forward to uh, this premiere on the 22nd, and it's been a joy having you as our Draylon yeah. Mason Composer in Residence this year. That, in addition to all the educational stuff that you uh, did mm -hmm. throughout the year with us. Yeah, so uh, we're looking forward to this. Yeah, so am I. I'm really excited. Thank you, Sophie. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.